Hi, Sandy here. Um, I haven't made much videos in quite a while. Um, I don't know. I, but I've been kind of busy um, reorganizing um, some of my stuff. These are my paper boxes I keep my paper in. And I've just gone through it. I'm rolling my chair over. <laughs> um, they're pretty low because I really wanted them up on this shelf when I put this room together. But these shelves are screwed into the side and these weigh a ton and I th just think that this shelf supported on these pegs here is a lot stronger so and they're just perfect from sitting but anyway so here's what I've done uh, you know I only do eight and a half by eleven pages I buy twelve by twelve twelve paper pads a lot not a lot um, I support sort my paper by uh, colors um, I previously I had gone through and cut down a lot of my papers to 8x12 but this last month or so I've cut them all down <laughs> um, mostly uh, and I got um, I've got some doilies here for creating I don't use them much I've got a lot of pink I'm gonna make a pink um, glue book just to use up some of this pink paper pink just multiplies uh, and I got brown, tan, vintage stuff, black. Um, I got what I call ready pages. And they are, um, oh, like this. It's got this, it's kind of already decorated and just put a picture on, you know. I'll have to put that back when my hands are free. Uh, and then I got things, like, oh, here's some bird cages some birds, um, stars, hearts. Uh, then I've got just some white scraps of paper. Sometimes if I'm gluing an embellishment onto something and, and it blends in too well with the background, I'll glue it onto a piece of paper and then cut it out with a white edge so it stands out better. Or if I want to make something to journal on, I'll use that paper. Um, so then I've got green, blue, purple, red, orange, yellow, and multicolor. And I changed the tags on the colors using that color of scrapbook paper. Um, and I'm just really happy with how this has turned out. And then this is my box of themed paper. And it turns out I have a lot of these. Um, well, not a lot. I've got four or five of these that I have bought over the years at thr garage sales of the packages of paper so I put those up front and then I've got construction home and I end up with um, these strips that I cut off the side plus a lot of these strips that I cut off the top an inch off the top to make it 11 inches tall instead of 12 inches and so like home construction um, I've got a, oh, where is it? Well, I have ca uh, books of embellishments, like, this is birthday. That's my embellishments, and I put my birthday scraps in there. And, um, except for the, these wide ones, and I put them right there. But I don't do that with those. Um, so I got, um, construction home, food kitchen, pets, Bicycles and sports, birthday, wedding, 4th of July, New Year, St. Pat's and other holidays right there together. Hearts and Valentine's, Easter, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Autumn, Snow, Winter, Christmas. I've pulled my Christmas because I'm working on Christmas right now. Um, vacation, outdoors, and I put some folders in there, made subfolders of nature, trees, swimming, beach, uh, sky, clouds, various subjects. Um, then I've got, I put this stu kid stuff in the back, school, baby, children, girl stuff, Mickey Mouse, and characters. I put those in the back because my daughter's, my daughter's going to be 21 in one week. I can't believe it. I wanted a baby for so long and now boom, it's up, it's over. And then this, this has been one hot mess. This is my glue book miscellaneous stuff. And I've organized it and I've put in these tabs. Um, so I've got some pre-made stuff. 
stuff I made to fill in spaces on glue books. Um, some eight and a half by eleven sheets that I watercolored and and made Franken paper. You know, glue a bunch of scraps. There's some watercolor splatters. Um, then I've got scraps, small pieces of paper, um, and I've got two a book. This book just just for the newsprint. And then I've got this Sears and Roll book, book, and it's got antiques and stuff, and it's pretty cool. So I've got that in my scraps. Then I've got this is is um, music and newsprint. See that? And then I've got um, maps um, and th these envelopes. Sometimes people create with these envelopes. I don't. You have any more of a journaler to do that, but I don't. And then I've got assorted scrapbook paper that I think might look good on Blue Book. And then I've got this antiques, antique section. See, and then I've got um, like postcards, uh, vin very vintage newsprint, very vintage. Then I've got um, this is scrapbook paper section. Then I've got ladies, um, like that, and um, this is this is special paper. There's some glitter paper and a lot of vellum paper, and then I've got um, I've got this that I use for paper. I took that out of one of these these vintage scrapbooks before I realized that I can make glue books with them as before I made glue books and then I've got um, like this kind of paper this is for when my daughter was little um, and sometimes I remake this I cut it apart and glue it back together to make an eight and a half by eleven page and then I've got cut aparts a section of cut aparts um, things I can cut out and use. I've got some um, family tree pa pages, but I know I'll never use those because I don't do eight and a half by eleven. And then I've got um, old things I've cut out of magazines for glue books. And then I've got um, a Holly Hobby and Victorian calendars. And these are like full page pictures that I can use in a glue book. And then I've got, um, what's this theme? Uh, full page flowers for magazines I got and these are quilt designs from a calendar and then I got animal calendar pages these are mostly calendar pages um, Barbie's Princess Mickey Mouse Lilith's Pet Shop um, train somebody gave me a Union Pacific and then I've got this envelope full of Christmas stuff for the glue books um so I've been organizing and then what I'm working on right now give a little spin um I'm making some tags and borders and I'm making some tag and border bases here's the the strips I cut off the side of the Christmas paper these all have to go or vertically these can run either way vertically or horizontally um, these are some smaller pieces these are some tags that I've borders bases that I've already made uh, these are some tags that I've already made now I do a lot of this kind of thing glue and scraps on on tags and then I got these these uh, horizontal and I, I use up the paper that needs to run horizontally to make these horizontal borders and that's I've only been doing these less than a year like maybe a year and then I've got these um, I had a sheet full of, of these strips and um, these are like all, and I glued these on with a little scrap these are almost ready to go I think I might add a little holly or some kind of little embellishment just to finish them off um, and then then the, the, they were 12 inch so I ended up with a little scrap so I'm, I'm putting some on a tag I need to you know just add a little touch to finish them off this is one of my finished um, 
horizontal borders. Um, I, I was making them thinner, and I decided, you know, 20 years of doing 8.5 by 11 pages, there's not a lot of layouts you can use on a page, and, and I'm good with that. But then uh, there's the blank space that's left, and um, or the, these borders on the side fill in some space, on, depending how you let your pictures. Horizontal borders fill out some space. You put two photos at the top with the, the border at the bottom. Um, the tags, you put three pictures on there. You end up with a, a little space, put the tag on it. Um, I, I, I don't always use tags and borders, but most of the time I do when I use the heck out of them. And I've got all of these that I just pulled out so they can all go together as I finish them up. Um, and I've got some in a book to, just that I flip through, and then I can keep refilling them. And I want my daughter to continue the scrapbooking. And if I have all of these ready and made up for her, all she's got to do is lay a few pictures on a page, slap on a border or tag, boom, instant page. So I cannot have too many of them. <laughs> these can last for decades down the road if I make enough and I'm good with that because I love making them um, and then I've got all of these things I've pulled out of my my Christmas book that I will be decorating my pages with um, then oh when I did my Christmas my greeting card purge I've got all of these greeting cards most of them I can't use for I don't know what I'm going to do with the larger ones. Well, for glue books, yes, that's what I'm going to do with them. But the smaller ones, I can make tags and borders with them. Um, I got the vertical ones and the horizontal ones. Then I've got cutout shapes. Um, then I've got smaller cutout shapes. I've got various shapes. Uh, smaller horizontal ones, smaller vertical ones. Um, I, I'm just going to town. Um, so here's what's on my desk. Um, I've got all these little little strips that I end up. Well, first off, I've got these bases that I made for the horizontal ones. See, there you go. And then I'll take three coordin or four like, coordinating strips, not like not those, and I'll I'll glue four strips on. And then I cut off the edge and you end up with, with these, which then I glue onto tags and make some tag bases. So that's what I'm working on right now. And um, I recently, before I did that, I just finished doing birthday. Here's my birthday book. Um, a lot of these I already had made. There's some some horizontal vertical vertical borders ready to go. Here's some horizontal borders ready to go. Um, here's my tags. Look at this one in the middle. Isn't that cute? That's he's got a birthday cake. That's for a little boy's birthday. That's awesome. Um, so I got my tags and I've. Uh, um, so I just flip through these first few pages and boom, instant birthday page. And then I've got these that I can create something with and some postcard size and then these embellishments and some tags. These are smaller size tags and I don't like using those size. They just, uh, they don't quite fit with the page. I don't know why. They just don't fit. Uh, and then I've got these long words that can go on a horizontal ver border more kind of longer words um, embellishments I put on tags or whatever and lots of birthday words and then I've got numbers oh I need to t take these pages out there's extra because um, I I used so much stuff making the recent batch of tags and borders um, and I got numbers I can add those to a page when I make it and I got some stickers of some confetti and then a baby's first Christmas I didn't make any tags with those I'm custom and then here's some scraps and I still got a few strips left paper scraps and then here's some 
Christmas greeting cards and some of them are small enough I can use on a tag or a border um, so um, and then down here hold on hold on <laughs> I recently made some more red tags and borders for backup. I made some bicycle tags and borders for backup because of my space in the book is full. And um, here's my backup supply of birthday. Because I don't want to fill up the book so full. So as I use them, I can refill the book. And uh, there's just my backup supply. <laughs> So that's what I've been doing, and I'm going to turn off the camera, put away a few things that I pulled out, and then we'll work on making some tags and border bases. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm ready to start gluing together one of my um, horizontal borders. Um, these strips are almost always pretty straight because I usually cut them with the um, paper trimmer which paints pretty straight lines um, so that works out well um, and it doesn't matter I just mix and match I try to coordinate the best I can but I'm down to not a lot of strips left so and it doesn't really matter because uh, because I cover up a lot of stuff <laughs> I, you know a lot of this stuff gets covered up So it doesn't matter too much how great the base is. I'm putting this one up here because I want this this to overlap. So now that means that I have to glue this one because this part is not glued. Okay. I think I'll take this down a little bit. There we go. I flip it over and I can see it's hanging off a little bit right there. And then I trim it down. This one is wide enough to put on a tag. These three are, are narrower. So, yeah, I'm always dropping things. So these I'm going to tear in half and put in this little bowl. These are my Christmas tiny scraps, which um, on my tags and borders, not not the vertical ones. So or the, the vertical borders, not the horizontal are. When I make tags, imagine this is covered with my paper. It's, you know, not just a base. I use these little things and I just hang them off the edge of my vertical tags and my, my vertical borders and my tags. You know, just to add interest. So, I use a lot of these. In fact, I've got a whole box of these sorted by color. And I use these. I do. And a couple of times, friends of mine have sent me these tiny scraps of paper. Michelle sent me some once. And I'm like, what she sent me these for? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then then um, an, another friend of mine, the Kathleen, sent me the tiny little squares. And Michelle sent me these little pages. There was like eight, eight of these stickers on when I just tore them up. And, um, yeah, they were going to get used. <laughs> Because if I hadn't done that, what am I going to do with them? What am I going to do with them otherwise? But they will get used. Alright, so there. That's a base ready to go. And now let's do a tag. So what I'm going to do... is glue this all up. And I have all of these bases. <laughs> and when I re when I did my Christmas card 
uh, not my greeting card. I'm forty. I had forty over forty years of greeting cards I had saved, and I saved quite a bit of them. But I went through and I purged a ton of them, and I cut the backs into these rectangles, which all I need to do. There's just so many of them I didn't do it yet, but I need to snip the corners. You, you know, I really you got these these corner rounders. And I don't want to round the corners, but they need to make them so you can just snip off a corner. Boom, boom, because a lot of times you, you snip a corner off and then you take it and you flip it and reverse it over here and use it for a guide. Just, we need one of these. Does anybody know if they make those? We need one of these that will just snip a little corner off. Not, I don't want to round the edge, but I just want to snip a little corner off for my tags because I'm the queen of tags. <laughs> and then... I've got all of these that I have already covered in in um, scrapbook paper, the strips of scrapbook paper, and I've sorted them green, blue, purple, pink. I've got a lot of pink, pink, <laughs> red, orange, yellow, multicolor. Um, I got black, and then I've got a ton of browns. I, I do like... Brown is not one of my favorite colors. This is brown. But I do use it a lot because I love making vintage tags. Okay. And that's what I do with my scraps of paper. I can't let nothing go to waste. And I got the jab burn and I had my paint my thing all glued and ready to go. And the glue is drying so I gotta re-glue it wet washcloth here to clean up that mess. Okay, and I got all my strips lined up here and I'm just going to start grabbing. Line that up. I'm trying to do a lot of green on this one. Just to kind of coordinate things. I don't know. I haven't got a lot of green. Okay, um, then I had, yeah, I got these that I cut off of something, and that goes right there to fill in that tiny, I'm probably looking at the top of my head now, <laughs> a tiny little space, and I need to glue the edge of this because this paper is going to stick to that. Okay, now, I just washed my scissors because they were caked in glue. <laughs> I'm going to save this for the, another top to fill in that tiny little gap. And, and yes, you get various sizes of, of gaps at the end that don't have space. This, this is my trash can. Look at these teeny, tiny, tiny scraps that I throw away. I try not to waste much of anything. So there's a tag base. Let's do another one. So, we got a new dog. Um, we used to, when I met my husband 22 years ago, I had three big dogs, a yellow lab mix, a golden, a German shepherd mix, and, um, she's kind of a golden retriever mix. She was blonde. She was kind of curly. Anyway, <laughs> so I had three dogs, and then he had a black and white cocker spaniel. So we got married and we had four dogs. We love dogs. And we never, and over the years they die off. And we never had four dogs again, but we've pretty much always had three dogs. And, um, so then recently, not so recently, um, well, we had a, a, a another female cocker spaniel 
and we were so relieved to see her go because she was peeing all over the house. She was older. That we didn't want to get another dog. And then we had Charlie, who's a golden retriever mix. And April um, 2020, shortly after COVID started, I don't need that on there. See that fit? Um, she had a sudden spine problem and got crippled and we had to have her put to sleep. And that left us with just one dog, Rosie, who is now seven years old. She's a supposed to be a coon hound, whatever that is. And she's uh, like a mini yellow lab. She, that's what color she is. She's got floppy ears. Her ears are a little bit longer than a yellow lab. Um, but she's just so sweet. She don't get in no trouble. She don't chew up anything. She did as a puppy. But she just, she's just so sweet. And lately we've been thinking, I want another dog. <laughs> we'll just get another dog like Rosie who's so sweet stays out of trouble. So we, we kept looking at um, Pet Finder. And um, we found Lillian, who is a... Um, German Shepherd mix and she's white and her ears don't stand up but she's you know that body shape and face is like a German Shepherd mix and we went and met her and she's so sweet and so she's she's only a year and a half um, but she likes to jump on people um, Okay, she's just a year and a half old we'll teacher. Um, I know she's going to chew on a few things. Um, she's got she's to learn some manners. We've got to stop her from jumping on people. Um, she's very sweet. But we get her home and we changed her name to Daisy. So now we have Rosie and Daisy, the flower names. And um, they're both a little bit antsy. And, but they're getting along good. Uh, takes them a little. They just need a little time. Um, and we got her on a Sunday. Um, Monday, I come home from work, and I realize I found out she's been chewing on the woodwork like those boys used to do. <laughs> okay, we got to train her not to do that. And I know how to fix woodwork, but I don't want to, <laughs> but I'm going to have to. Anyway, so then the next day, um, I come home and I find more woodwork. Tuesday's housework day, and I pull out the chair right in front of the window, and my windows have kind of fancy woodwork. I put it, installed it myself, and it's got the little squares, the decorative little squares on the corners, and then the woodwork around the windows. And she chewed up one of those and broke it. Well, that's easy enough to replace. But I don't like that. <laughs> and then, um, Wednesday I come home from work. And my brother is supposed to be keeping her out of trouble. <laughs> because we, we work, he doesn't. And, um, I need to cut a strip of this to fill in. I come home and we got one of them cheapy little carpet squares that you buy for a dollar or two that's been um, finished on the edges. And But we keep that by the back door and I walk in the house and that is <laughs> shredded. There's there's little carpet fibers so all over the floor. Okay, she got a hold of a rug. Uh, so I go upstairs, and that rug is laying on the stairs. And my brother says to me, Did you see the rug? Well, obviously he saw the rug, and he didn't do anything about it. He didn't take it away from her. So, and then I go upstairs, and she's had a few little accidents. She's only a year and a half. You know, she's got a lot to adapt to. She was a stray, and her family didn't come and claim her. Um, so, she's been peeing a little bit you know maybe every other day she's peeing and so but I think she's mostly housebroken 
And plus there's three puddles of pee in the family room. I have laminate floors. I don't have any carpet in the house except on the stairs. But, so I wonder what the heck did he do anything about that dog? He don't clean up after or nothing. So, I have a, a dog cage, a very log, large dog cage, like the largest size for really big dogs. And I got it for Charlie. When he was a puppy, oh my god, he hated that. He hated that. Too. And he would just drool the whole time he's in there. And it's been in the basement all these years. And then when I redid the basement, got it waterproofed and put in laminate flooring in the basement a year ago, almost a year ago, I got it out of the basement and I put it in the garage. And, um, because I'm going to sell it. Well, I never got around to selling it. And thank goodness because... I brought it in the house and I put it back together. It's so big you can't get it through a doorway without without disassembling it. But I put it back together up in the family room. And so whenever we leave, we have to put her in there. And I feel bad. I really do. I feel, I feel bad about it. But I can't have her destroying the house. We don't need that. So... Then I remember, well, now I remember, oh, yeah, now I know why I didn't want any more dogs. <laughs> but she, she is a sweetie, and she just needs a little time to learn. She'll be fine. And, and in my personal experience, now, I did have one female dog who was a holy terror. <laughs> but uh, f for the most part, I think boys are a lot more destructive than the, than the girls. Because they have done some damage. My, my males have done some damage. My golden retriever was absolutely the worst, most destructive dog I've had. But we keep them till they die because we love them. They're family. You know, kids make messes and destroy things too. But, well, so we got another dog. And I, I have faith in her. She's going to outgrow this stuff. She, she's a good girl. She, she's real sweet. So I think that's an... Oh, I'm going to do a little bit more here. I just got my counter wet because I wiped off some glue. Anyway, so let's see now. I'm just going to take this strip and glue it across here and that's good to go. Now if I had a whole lot of strips, sometimes I would do them like this and just glue strips to make the border bases. But like I said, I cover them up. I like to put a lot of stuff on my borders so it doesn't really matter. So this is what I've been doing and I have, going through my papers, I've got strips in most of my books in those categories. And I'm, I'm, I plan on doing some baby and children's tags and borders because um, I've been doing them oh, three or four years now, but I never got around to doing any child, baby and, I did a few, not many, baby and children ones because my daughter was a teenager and I didn't need them. I did make a few for the nieces and nephews kids um, when I put those in the scrapbooks. Um, let's see. Well this is my baby and children's book. Yeah I got a couple of um, borders I made. Now this, I, got, I need to redo this. I don't want, want it going up and down like this anymore. This is just a base. Uh, but I've got all this stuff to make borders and tags with. Um, I got some scraps. Um, my friend Michelle just gave me all of these long stickers um, for wedding, baby, Christmas, everyday sports. Um, and these are these are stickers on a really heavy plastic backing, so I can make borders and tags with those. And I, whenever I come across baby stuff, I just throw it in a pocket. This has been so neglected. These are from Cut Apart so I needed to make stuff with that. Um, it's a hot mess. This is really cute. Um, 
It was a scrapbook paper my friend Michelle just gave me, and I cut it down to a scrapbook paper size. I'm not sure where you would put the uh, photo of the baby. <laughs> But it's just an adorable page. I think I would put maybe a small fo photo on the door. Uh, I don't know. And um, years ago, a friend of mine, she's passed away now. She used to sell Stamp It Up or something. What? I'm, I'm leaving, so I left the dogs in, so you want okay, to keep an eye Okay, okay. Bye. All right, that way you keep an eye on them. But she gave me all of these um, pre-made stamped pages because nobody does eight and a half of them anymore except me and then I made some of these I'm into the kids area um, I need to shorten these and widen them to make them horizontal I don't like those so I got all this kids stuff oh, all of these are are horizontal I need to redo them um, I got all this stuff I've collected I, I made a bunch of tags one time these small baseball card size now this was um, trading pockets. I forget what you call them. You, you, they're like you make them to trade, but I never had anybody to trade with. Uh, but I've got all this stuff, and I'm gonna create some tags and borders for kids, and and don't get excited. My daughter is engaged. She has set the wedding date in two years, in November 2024. <laughs> so. There's no babies on the way. I got some kids paper scraps, some Lego here. Um, I got this page. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want a, kid, a gun on the kids page. But um, like one year my one of the ne nephews dressed, dressed up as a policeman and that was awesome. Um, so, and this is one of my... I made this cut it down put it on here for it's a ready ready page anyway and then then teen girls I did use some of this stuff but I didn't make much tags and borders with it um, you know there oh yeah I did there's 13 so now my daughter's gonna be 21 but I, I can make stuff with this um, yeah I need to I need to use this stuff I do I need to use this stuff up so I'll be working on that and don't get excited. No no grandbabies on the way yet. But hopefully someday. Hopefully just as I'm retiring. That will work out very nice for me. So thanks for watching and I've been busy and um maybe I'll turn the camera on again when I start actually using these bases and creating some Christmas tags and borders. Bye bye.